Hey, today we're going to make a skillet blackberry cobbler. This is really easy to make. You're going to have two pie crusts. You can make your own or you can get some from the grocery store. Be sure and let them set out in the air at room temperature for a little bit so that they're easier to unroll. If they're cold, they tend to stick to itself when it's unrolling. So see, this is what you got right here. And in my cast iron skillet, I don't have to worry too much about it sticking, but I'm going to go ahead and spray it lightly with some olive oil. And I'm going to lay this right in the bottom of my skillet, just like that. My oven has been preheated at 350. We're going to put the crust in the oven for about seven to eight minutes until it turns a golden brown. And then we're going to come back to it. We're going to finish the cobbler. Okay, while your crust is in the oven cooking, you can do this while you're waiting. Take fresh blackberries or frozen blackberries. These are from my dad's garden, so they're room temperature. And it's a, you know, a good size medium bowl. But if you were going to use frozen from the grocery store, you'd probably want to buy two bags. And frozen works just as well as fresh does. So, you got your berries in the bowl. You've got a cup and a half of white granulated sugar sprinkle that on top you have a half a cup of flour sprinkle that on top kind of mix that around a little bit you have one teaspoon of ground cinnamon One, let's start with the nutmeg. There's a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Sprinkle that with your berries as well. And just throw in about a, just about a half of a teaspoon of lemon extract, lemon juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, any of it will work. The citrus really brings out the flavor of the blackberries. So now this is a full stick of melted butter. Pour that in. You're just going to mix those around. It's going to look kind of crumbly, kind of, kind of gloppy actually. But just be sure and get all of the flour and the sugar kind of incorporated a little bit damp. It's not that big of a deal because once it goes into the oven and it starts to heat up, all of this is going to start to melt down. So you don't have to be too particular with it. So let's set this to the side. And let's see how the crust is going. I forgot to mention that when you're working with pie dough and it's raw and you're going to cook a pie shell, you always want to poke it with a fork like this so that it won't have bubbles come up while you're cooking. But these refrigerated cook doughs, you don't really have to worry about it. I like to flip mine over like that and I'll show you why. If you can see it, it, it's already brown and crusty on the bottom so I'm going to turn it over because when it's cooking it's going to brown up even more on the bottom. So if I flip it over then it doesn't tend to burn but it does crisp up. So if you can touch it be careful. Uh, usually they just flip right over like a pizza crust so it's no big deal. Alright so you're going to gently take your berries and pour them over this bottom crust. I kind of pile them a little bit in the middle because they cook down to the sides. Get all the flour and sugar off if you can. Because that's what makes your juice, so you want to make sure you keep that. So just pack them around like a little mountain like this and then with your half a cup of water you're going to just slightly sprinkle it over here you can hear it sizzling in the skillet be very careful while you're working around the skillet because it will burn you and it burns like that so be very careful so as you can see i'll show you in the camera they're just piled up like that right 
nothing special. You don't have to make sure that they're even or anything such as that. Take your other pie crust. You unroll it and you hope that it works with you instead of against you. And if it does tear, it's not that big of a deal. Cobblers aren't meant to look beautiful anyway. So, kind of the rougher they look, I think they look better myself. But they look a little bit more rustic. Pull it gently because you're going to be going over a bigger mound of berries than you did on the bottom of your skillet. So give it a little tug all the way around the sides and then just lay it on like a blanket. Just like that. Now, like I said, the cast iron is very hot, so try to seal it toward the sides, but you don't have to make any, any fluting or anything like that like you would a regular pie. You're just going to cover it like a blanket. Y'all see that? Next, I know I have a I know I had a knife around here somewhere, but I guess I lost it. With a sharp paring knife, you're going to make four cuts through the center of your crust, and that's going to allow steam to escape while you're cooking. So, if you can see that, that's what I'm talking about. Good. Take your temperature up to 375 while we bake the pie. This is a probably a, a fourth of a cup, maybe a little bit less of granulated sugar with a sprinkle of cinnamon in it. And just like with the peach cobbler, you're just going to sprinkle it all over the top. And then you have a half a stick of cold butter chopped in cubes. Just lay it all around the top of your crust. It's just going to melt into your pie crust and it's going to help it to look golden. Now while you're baking this, if you notice it's getting too dark before the time is up, I encourage you to use a pie shield or maybe after it's golden, just a one strip of aluminum foil just to cover the edges of the top of your pie so that it's not burnt. I have never had a problem with it. It cooks in my stove fine, I mean my oven fine without burning. So now we're going to put it in the oven. This is going to cook for about 45 minutes. So it's something that you can put on and go do something else and come back. Or you can cook uh, a meal on top of your stove and then everything's ready at the same time. So we're going to set our timer for 45 minutes and we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so it's been about 50 minutes. I left my cobbler in a little bit longer because I wanted the crust to be a little bit browner on top. So careful when you take it out, the steam is really hot. So now it's done. I'm going to try to hold it up so you can get a good visual of what it looks like. See if it cracks. To me, I think that looks better. It looks like more old fashioned. But you've got plenty of juice around the edges. And as you can see, it's like bubbling. It's that hot. So I give it at least 30 to 40 minutes to cool down and then serve it with some ice cream and you're ready to go. Okay, I wanted to add this to this recipe as a hack because you're probably not going to eat all of this at one time. So you save it, you put it in your refrigerator, and when you go to warm it up, it's a little dry because all the juice that it once had has now been incorporated into your flour pot, right? And so now it's dry. So what do you do? Well, there's an easy hack. In a small saucepan, take a heaping tablespoon, and I mean a big tablespoon, maybe even two, of whatever jellies you have in your refrigerator. Uh, strawberry and grape work great together. Add equal parts grape, strawberry, or blackberry, or if you have blueberry, add them to a stock pot, add the equal parts water, and heat it until the consistency is just liquid. Pour that over your cobbler when you're ready to reserve it at a later date, and that will give you the juice that you need, and having the mix of the berries tastes really good, and I think you'll like that. 